Hello, everyone, and welcome to Rust Nation. I'm so sorry I cannot be there with you in person, but I am very glad to have the opportunity to present to you remotely. I'm Nell Shamrell Harrington. I'm a principal engineer at Microsoft in the Azure office of the CTO. I'm also the lead editor of This Week in Rust. If you are not subscribed, I encourage you to become so. I am additionally a board member of the Rust Foundation, and if you'd like to reach out to me, I'm on Mastodon at hackyderm.io slash at Nell My journey with Rust began when I worked at a startup called Chef on a product called Habitat. Habitat was focused on software packaging and distributed systems, and it was written in a new-to-me language called Rust. Wanting to contribute to the product as fast as possible, I dove into the Rust book, Rust tutorials, and more. And as I began to become familiar not only with the language, but also the people who use and make it, I knew this was a place I wanted to stay. I started writing Rust when I wanted to build better distributed systems. I continue writing Rust because of the community. As I took my first steps with this language, no one ever said or even implied that a question that I asked was stupid. They were very, very welcoming. Something I've seen time and time again from my own experience, as well as the experience of editing This Week in Rust, is that the global Rustation community is dedicated to teaching and nurturing each other. This is very different from some other online communities out there. What makes the Rust community different is that empathy and personal maturity are as important, if not more important, than technical skill. We are all on a journey with this language, and a crucial part of building our Rust skills is working with and lifting up others on this same journey. Esteban Kubor, a member of the Rust compiler team, puts it this way. We spent decades trying to invent a sufficiently smart compiler when we should have been inventing a sufficiently empathetic one. I also love the way Ashley Williams, co-founder of the Rust Foundation, puts it. Rust product is not a programming language or compiler. Rust product is the experience of being a Rust developer. Every single one of us, no matter what our role is or what our level is, can contribute to this experience. We do that by passing on what we have learned. As we learn new Rust concepts or become familiar with them on a deeper level, we pass that on to others. Passing on what we have learned may sound virtuous, and it certainly is, but that's not the only benefit. Passing on what we have learned builds our technical skills and benefits our careers as professional developers, product managers, or whatever we do for work. Tim McNamara, author of Rust in Action, put it this way to me. Writing a technical book and giving technical talks has been an incredible boost to my career. This is because you don't truly know something until you can teach it. We don't truly know something until we can teach it. Whether it's through a blog post, a response to a question on Stack Overflow, a response on the Rust subreddit, or anything else, teaching and sharing on a topic forces us to have a deeper understanding of it. I did not fully understand traits in Rust, even though I could use them, until I taught others about them through a Dungeons and Dragons metaphor. Now they are ingrained in my brain and I can use them even more fluently. Kushal Das, who is director of the Python Software Foundation and a part of the Tor Project Core team, shared a similar story with me. I started doing workshops on writing Python I started doing workshops on writing Python modules in Rust, and questions on the live sessions made me learn things much deeper than I usually had to. Understanding concepts at a deeper level makes us better technologists, and in the case of Rust, makes us better Rustations. 
And let's discuss exactly what a restation is. A restation is anyone who has an interest in rust at any level and any role. By attending this conference or watching a recording of this talk, congratulations, you are most definitely a rustation. Additionally, rustations don't force each other to go through pain in order to prove themselves worthy of being a member of the community. Instead of tearing each other down, we lift each other up because every single one of us was new to this language at some point. And we pave the way for those who come after us. If you are interested in Rust, you are a Rustation and you belong here. Throughout your journey, the global Rustation community will have your back every step of the way. And the best way to learn Rust is to participate in it. Participation includes open source contributions of any kind, whether that's code, tests, documentation, a new version of our Ferris mascot, and much more. It can also include, if you're comfortable, joining the dis discussions in Discourse and the Rust subreddit. There are a lot of fantastic discussions out there, and I have learned so much from them. And if you prefer real-time communication, there is also the Rust Discord and Zulip server. These are all great ways of participating in the community. My personal favorite, however, is through creating blog posts, podcasts, or videos about Rust and submitting them to This Week in Rust. Long before I became lead editor, This Week in Rust was my gateway to the Rust community. I think of it as the heartbeat of the global Rustation community. Part of why having this heartbeat is so important is that Rust is used in so many different contexts, many of which you will hear about in today's sessions. Rust is most well known for its use in systems programming. That's certainly the context where I started with Rust. It is also used for web application programming with frameworks like Rocket and for game programming with game engines like Bevy. If this kind of programming interests you, definitely check the Bevy game engine out. Rust is also increasingly used in embedded programming, and I know there are sessions today which will cover this area. And over the past few years, Rust is also starting to be used in machine learning. And there are so many more contexts out there that Rust is used in that we can connect over with each other as Rustations. As Luca Palmieri, author of Zero to Production in Rust puts it, when I started to write content, This Week in Rust was, together with r slash Rust, the most effective way to put it in the spotlight and connect with other people who might share an interest. When Rustations share their context and their interests with each other, no Rustation is ever alone. This is extraordinarily powerful, both from a human and a technical perspective. As you consider sharing your experience in context with Rust, here are a few questions you might find yourself asking yourself. And these are all questions that people have asked me. What if I'm new to Rust? What could I possibly have to contribute? The answer to this is that no matter what level or your role, again, your thoughts and experiences are very valuable and welcome. Rinal Wadwa, CTO of Akem, said it like this. I think the coolest thing about This Week in Rust is that its content is created by the community. It surfaces opinions from newcomers and makes their contributions visible to the larger Rust Lang community. Newcomers are welcome in Rust, and their perspective is vital, both to the development of the language as well as its adoption. Another question I hear a lot is even if there is something I'd like to write about, doesn't everybody already know this? 
I should note, I don't just hear this question from people new to Rust. I also hear it from people who have been riding Rust for quite some time. I can tell you with 100% confidence that answer is no. Absolutely not. As Rust adoption increases, people learning the language come from a huge range of experiences and backgrounds. Federico Mena Quintero, co-founder of the GNOME project, shared this with me. Before Rust, I was vaguely aware of functional programming and type systems, but they were completely outside my league. Its documentation, blogs, Namacon, basically met me where I was at, not too low level C, and made sure I could grasp such abstract concepts because I could apply them directly to my code. Additionally, seeing a concept explained in a different way, even if it's been explained before, deepens knowledge and retention. This is enormously beneficial for our careers in Rust development. As Totality Nerd, I'm afraid I don't know their IRL name, uh, put it on the discourse forums, I think there's something about the weekly repetition of introductory posts as there's some turning point in development. It's much more effective for memorization than reading a book and makes in-depth information quick to find when needed. Anytime I'm curious about something in Rust, I go to the This Week in Rust GitHub repo at github.com slash rustlang slash thisweekinrust and search for that topic. When I searched for async Rust, I found a wide variety of blog posts and tutorials on the topic. Even though asynchronous Rust was difficult to get my head around at first, seeing different explanations in different ways helped me immensely and built my confidence. It's a great way to find a variety of content whenever you are trying to understand something Rust related. And there will very soon be a search feature on the This Week in Rust homepage, so searching for articles on a topic will be even easier. Another question I often hear, is what if I put something out there and someone tells me I'm wrong? I believe the best answer to this question comes from Aaron Turon, a former member of the Rust core team. No one can be wrong about their own lived experience. Writing about your experience with Rust, what you've learned with your own background and context is tremendously valuable to the entire community. Finally, another question that tends to come up is, what if the work I'm doing with Rust is under NDA? What if I can't share my exact context? And this is a very common scenario, including with some of the work that I personally do in Rust on behalf of Microsoft. When you can't share specifics, you can instead talk about what you learned about Rust in the process. Even if you can't say exactly what the product or project is, I guarantee you learned something about Rust in the process of working on it. Having something featured in This Week in Rust not only benefits the community, it also benefits our personal growth and careers. As Marcus Willock, a great Rust YouTuber, put it to me, LinkedIn Learning discovered me because they went to This Week in Rust and saw a video of mine linked in the newsletter. Additionally, John Jainset, one of my fellow speakers at this event and author of Rust for Rustations, expressed it in this way. A big part of the reason I got my current job at AWS was because I was seen as someone with broad and deep knowledge in the Rust ecosystem. Having content out there and accessible makes a world of difference in our careers. To contribute something to This Week in Rust, head on over to github.com slash rustling slash This Week in Rust and open up a pull request. Pull requests are my preferred way for people to submit things to This Week in Rust. However, you can also tweet a link to at This Week in Rust on Twitter, or if you prefer Mastodon, we are also present at mastodon.social slash at This Week in Rust. And beyond blog posts and tutorials, there's also other opportunities to contribute to the newsletter. You can nominate and vote for a crate of the week. 
If the crate is selected, you will be acknowledged in this section. And should a crate that you've worked on or your own crate uh, be selected, you will suddenly get a lot of traffic toward that crate. Similarly, you can also nominate a quote of the week. And this is likely my favorite section of This Week in Rust because these quotes often contain so much insight and so much humor and showcase the best of the Rust community. As I move toward concluding this talk, I hope you take away this. The Rustation community is as mature and empathetic as it is through the efforts of every one of you passing on what you have learned. I couldn't have put it better than Carol Nichols, one of the authors of the Rust book. The real 10 time the real 10 times developers don't create 10 times the code. They create 10 other programmers by helping them level up. She continues, sharing what I've learned in writing the book, making a video course, and starting Rustlings has multiplied my impact on the world in a way I never could have done only by coding. Rustlings, by the way, is an incredible resource for both learning Rust and refreshing your skills with it. I highly recommend checking it out. Even after many years of experience, I still do these exercises from time to time in order to keep my Rust skills sharp. And another great resource for learning Rust along the same lines is Exorcism, which offers really good self-contained exercises for learning a variety of programming languages. Additionally, Exorcism also offers mentorship for the exercises, where if desired, someone experienced with the language can provide feedback on solutions to the exercises. And if you in the audience are more experienced in Rust, please consider becoming an exorcism mentor. And on the topic of mentors, if you are looking for one, the awesome Rust Mentors GitHub repo is an excellent resource. If you are experienced in Rust, again, please consider becoming a mentor to others who are taking their first steps with the language. It won't just benefit your mentees, it will benefit you as well. Remember, what is good for the global Rustation community makes the entire Rust ecosystem better and is good for you and your career with Rust. Jonathan Pallant, a senior engineer with Ferris Systems, shared this story with me. I talked about Rust and the daft computer I made with it to anyone who would listen. I started a meetup, went to RustConf, etc., and then Ferris Systems gave me a job and saved me from a life of professionally writing underwhelming embedded systems in C. As you go through Rust Nation over the next couple of days, I highly encourage you to write up a blog post about your experience at this conference and submit it to This Week in Rust. Pass on what you learn here and share this experience with all, including me. Before I close, I want to give a big shout out to my fellow editors of This Week in Rust. There is absolutely no way I could do this newsletter alone. These editors are Andre Bogus, another fellow speaker here at this event, Colton Donnelly, Eric Sepinen, Stefan Dilly, Andrew Pollock, Brad Gibson, Marion Golden, Benny Vasquez, Joel Marcy, and Samir Kolar. Thank you.